G'day there. Um, I had a question about uh, my setup for the Razer Hydra, so I figured I'd post another video where I just quickly walk you through how I went about setting it up. Now to start with, you'll need to go and download the Hydra uh, plugin for Unreal on the forums. Uh, user GetNamo, G-E-T-N-A-M-O, has put out uh, another update for this awesome plugin that fixes a lot of the crash errors that I was having before. Um, please say thank you to this guy. He has absolutely kicked it uh, and shared this with the community. And uh, to be so quick on updating it for 4.9 as well, when it had issues, when Epic brought in their agnostic motion control stuff, please just give him a thumbs up, give him a hoy, because uh, he's just done the most awesome thing and changed my world. So cool. Anyway, once we have downloaded that, you will have the experimental branch, uh, which will be a zip file. Now, if we open this up, we'll see it's got Hydra UE4 Experimental. What we need to do is take this plugins folder and drop that into the root of our new project. So we'll create a new project here, a first person one. Let's call this Hydra Tutorial one. All right, uh, and I'm actually going to set this for uh, scalable 2D, 3D because uh, if we were going to do it in VR, we don't want all the bells and whistles turned on. So um, this is just a great way to start. So we'll create the project, we'll let it have a think. So Hydra Tutorial folder has popped up in here. <coughs> I'll let it boot up and then I'll close it and put the plugin in and then reboot the project. If you'll bear with me for a second. Okay, right, okay, I don't know why it's whinging about that. We'll close that down, dragging this plugin folder in there. Awesome. And then we should be able to reboot that one, close it out. Word to the wise, if you are using 4.9, make sure you do get the experimental one that he's posted up there. Uh, I'll attach a link to the forum thread on this uh, video. Okay, so now if we jump into settings, uh, plugins, under project input.controller, we'll see the Hydra plugin and we'll see that it's automatically enabled. That is perfect. That is what we want. That is all well and good. So um, we can take the existing first person character and mess around with it a bit if we want. I'm actually going to create my own, uh, create a new folder. Let's call it Hydra character. And I'm really doing, actually, no. Uh, yeah, all right. I'll show you how to do it here first. So we'll create a new blueprint class. Um, we'll make it a character and we'll call this Hydra character test. All right, we jump in there. And as I said, this is leveraging uh, Epic's new agnostic motion control setup stuff. Um, so all we need to do is add a component under motion controller. And let's call this left for our left hand. Under this index uh, and hand thing, we'll leave that on left. We'll just duplicate it, call it right, and then change that hand to be the right hand, which is all well and good. The next thing that I've had to do, and I know this is wrong, I know this is wrong, anyone watching this is gonna smack me for it, but because of the way I have it set up on my desk, it's easier for me to have an offset to get things working properly. So I call this hand root, and uh, that's just a basic scene component. It's just a transform, and I take the hands, I parent it to that, and then generally speaking, I'll drag it forward a bit and maybe up a little bit. It, it's horses for courses, depending on where your Hydra is set up in front of you. Um, a, a lot of the people talking about the calibration stuff uh, goes over my head a little bit at the moment. Well, I, I just, I haven't been sufficiently motivated to go through and set that stuff up in my experimentation. Everything I'm doing seems to work okay for me right now, but I sit in the same chair with it the same distance away from me and everything. So I'm kind of doing this to make it work for me. All right. So that's essentially all we should need to do. What we can do is add in, say, a static mesh, and let's make it, I don't know, uh, the chamfer cube. Let's attach that to the right hand. We'll call it um, right hand mesh. Um, I'm gonna scale it down quite considerably so that it's about hand size. I'm also probably going to make it a little bit skinnier. And maybe let's add an arrow to it. So we know, actually, do you know what's even better? Let's get rid of that. We'll resize that. Uh, there is an asset here that's really awesome for it. So if I go into my static mesh selector, turn on show engine content, uh, there was an axis, axis guide, which is uh, the mesh for your axis guide. And it's awesome. I mean, it doesn't have the materials on there, 
but I don't really care about that because it's just it just works really well. So um, we'll duplicate that and attach that to the left hand. And he's also got a Hydra plugin set up for this now. Now this component was missing in the last video that I, I showed. But what this is going to do in my event graph, it lets you access a whole bunch of information. It also accesses events like whether or not the um, it's plugged in or unplugged. Uh, if the controls get docked or undocked, um, that kind of a thing. It's got button pressed, button released, joystick moved, and controller moved. So you can bind the Hydra controls directly to stuff in your game. I personally would use the input manager for that stuff, um, which I do. So that really ought to be everything we need to do to make it work to start with. Under our world settings, we will just set it to game... Oh no, we'll set it to... We'll create a new game mode. Uh, we'll create a new one in here. Blueprint class, game mode, let's call it Hydra GM. And if we select that there, we can now choose our pawn to be the Hydra character test. Alright, we'll save that. Whoa. Okay. Full screen it. Alt P to play. And now what we should have... Which... Ah! Hang on. Why is it doing that? Oh, I know why. I know why. Because this level has its uh, set up with a player character already in there. It doesn't use the player start. It's set to auto-possess this one. So down here it's got auto-possess. I'll just frag it off. Hit play. And now... Nope. Why you do this? Oh, let's eject. Okay. Interesting. Uh, must be the... Ah, ah, ah. I know. Um... Oh, positioning's all whack. They're all there. Ah, ah, a derp, a derp, I'm a derp. The axes aren't actually attached to that position, so hopefully this should now look a little bit better. There we go. All right. So I've undocked the controllers. They're doing their thing. As I said, the position of that um, uh, offset might be a little bit whack. They're actually a bit above my head now, so you need to tweak that as you play through, I think, you know, or do what I can't be bothered doing and un properly understand how the calibration stuff works. But that's how we get something uh, attached to the Hydra positions and get them working in the game. So I'll probably just take that hand root and maybe move it up a little bit and maybe forward a little bit as well, just to sort of do that. Um, now, the other thing that I think you probably want to know about will be um, doing the hand states, but I think I'll stop this video here and do another one on that in a second.